Hello and welcome back to the Vegan Runner. Today we're taking the Puma Forever Run Nitro on their first run. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, before we get on with this first run review, just want to say these shoes were sent to me by Puma, but they're not paying me. They're not telling me to, to say anything. So this is my, my own review, my own honest first impressions of the Puma Forever Run Nitro. These are fresh out of the box today. I had literally the first few minutes in them. I'm gonna take them for a recovery run up and down the Taka Trail to see how they get on. Just to get some of the stats out of the way, so they're a support shoe. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But yeah, support shoe from Puma. Using their nitro foam, they've got a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop and they're weighing in at about 260 grams in my size, which is UK seven and a half. And then if you're new to running, or perhaps just not that into running shoes, you might not be aware that there's two types of running shoes. There's neutral and there's support. Support shoes do what they say on the tin, really. They support your foot through your gait cycle, stopping any kind of excessive pronation, which can sometimes, for some people, lead to injury. Whereas neutral shoes, by and large are uh, unrestrictive of that foot cycle. They don't support you very much, but depending on your gait cycle will really depend on whether you're a neutral runner needing neutral shoes or you pronate and need support shoes. So how do you find out whether you're needing a neutral shoe or a support shoe? Well, for most people, after they start getting into running, they're going to go to a sports shoe shop um, and some of them have treadmills there where they'll film you in slow motion and they'll take a look at your gait cycle and they'll be able to see whether your ankle sort of collapses in or out or it's kind of straight and that'll tell you whether you need a support shoe or a neutral shoe. Now when I went, one of my feet, and this was years ago, one of my feet was straight one of my foot cycles sort of was leaning in and, and pronating and the young man in the sports shop didn't really know what to do. Now the support sort of neutral shoe thing, there's a bit of contention out there, whether it's really necessarily needed. But anecdotally, what I hear from other runners is, is they started running three to six months in, they start getting these niggling injuries. They go to the shoe shop, they get their gait analysed and then they find they need a support shoe, buy a support shoe and those niggling pains and injuries go away and vice versa for people who maybe bought a pair of support shoes by accident when you know there's so much jargon around running shoes when you first pick up your first pair, they buy those, put them on, they don't agree with them and then find out that they're a neutral runner a little bit later on. So my general advice really is if you can get to one of those shoe shops and get that gate cycle done, it's a handy sort of tool to have. But one way or the other, don't put too much kind of stress and emphasis on it. I think your gate cycle changes as you get a bit more experience of running. The muscles around your ankles and your feet change. And I suspect that gate cycle changes too. The fun thing about it, is that you get to try lots of different running shoes and find 
which one works for you. And I think that's one of the funnest things when you start running and you start sort of understanding shoes and you see there's all these different types. But anyway, that just gives you a, a brief and very shallow introduction to support shoes. Now, I tend to go towards neutral shoes. In fact, nearly every pair of shoes I've owned have been neutral just because that's what I've got on with. When I've worn support shoes in the past, they tend to make my feet hurt. So I've leant towards neutral shoes and nine times out of 10, they've all been fine. And if you're like me, I don't think that you should rule out ever wearing these support shoes, particularly on days like today where I've got a 40 minute recovery run and an 11 mile trail run on the coast yesterday with a lot of elevation. My legs are feeling pretty beat up. So it was nice just to get a bit of support and a bit of help from a shoe whilst I'm taking it easy. Okay, so onto the actual shoe review. The Puma Forever Run Nitro. It's just my first impressions. I'm about three miles in. And the first thing that's striking me about the shoe is their stability. You can really feel that extra width in this sort of heel counter and the midfoot. There's not very much wobble or instability going on there. It's actually perfect for the support run. I'm just sort of plodding along, not thinking too much about my form. Yeah, I can definitely feel that extra space, that extra wide midfoot of the foam. Now, when you look at these built up support shoes, you often think they're going to be quite heavy and more often than not, because of the guide rails and the bits of plastic and things in there that are helping to keep your foot kind of straight and stable, they often are quite heavy. These, I think, are running around about 260 grams and they feel pretty light. 250 is a good weight. I think for my normal sort of neutral shoes as a daily trainer I think these look pretty decent particularly with all that support built in so another feature that Puma have added to this shoe is their dual density nitro foam so dual density literally meaning one part of the, the foam soft another part's more rigid and the inner part in the center of your foot that's nice and soft, feels pretty good on a landing right in the middle of my forefoot and then on the outside you've got more rigid foam and again that's supposed to help keep that foot stable stop that tilt all the way from your ankle to your midfoot and at the moment even though that foam is quite rigid it's a nice soft plush ride I think they've done a good job with a dual density foam. And then speaking of the heel, you have got that big kind of plastic heel counter, just locking that ankle in place. They're very stable, all of these features sort of come together and work together to keep that foot stable. It's interesting, when I've worn support shoes in the past, they felt so rigid and kind of you know, you can really feel the shoe working to kind of restrict the movement of your foot, but can't feel that in the pumas here. I'm just trying to land awkwardly on my feet to see what the shoes do. But at the moment, more or less, they're kind of letting my foot do what it wants to do. But I think because they just have that wide base and the foam isn't too squishy, They're doing a good job of letting the foot fall fairly naturally and just offering a bit of support. All right, we're ticking along here. Just keeping it easy, eight and a half mile. And a couple of other things I've, I've noticed. So flat laces, pretty good. I've got a decent lockdown straight out of the box. Plenty of laces there. Again, from Puma, this is good. I like to use those top two lace holes to get already nice secure fit, but out of the box, just try the lacing as it is, as I imagine most people would. And the other thing I'd like to say is that 
They're surprising me a bit at the moment. Often in the past when I've tried support shoes, they tend to feel quite clunky. Something that you generally kind of wear for maybe a long run or a short recovery run, something like that, where you're not too bothered about the weight and the speed, but you just want to go out for a sort of general plod. But at the moment, these support shoes are feeling like they could probably have a go at everything, really. I don't feel too heavy, so definitely throw a bit of speed work at them. If I want to pick up the pace in a long run or a shorter run, absolutely could in these. I don't think without any issues. Just try a quick blast, just to... <laughs> it's a recovery run, I shouldn't... But I'm going to just for like 20 seconds or so, I'll film it as well. Just so you get an idea of how they move over pace. There we go. Hitting most of the bushes there as you get along. Yeah, they didn't feel restrictive at all there. That's quite good. I think this is going to be a really interesting shoe, particularly if you wear support shoes normally, because I often think support shoes kind of lack out, or they miss out on the kind of lightweight, fast, neutral shoes. The majority of shoes on the market tend to be neutral shoes. But these support, support shoes are feeling really nice. So really stable, not heavy. The upper feels pretty good. It's not, I wouldn't say it's overly breathable, but my feet don't feel hot. I can't feel air coming through, but that's all right. Now I've just tried heel striking on purpose. So if you're a heel striker, that's another reason why some people need support shoes. Sometimes people heel strike more often when they're, you know, at the end of a run, the form drops off a bit. I've just tried hill striking in them and you can really feel the guidance sort of system kicking into place there really kind of propelling your foot forward and into that more normal kind of motion yeah really interesting shoe um i've got another mile to go so if i have any further thoughts ah there is uh, just one thing i want to say and that was just sort of inspecting the shoe taking them out of the box I think these are retailing at around about £175 on the Puma website, so not a cheap shoe by any means. Up there with, you know, the priciest shoes on the market. We're taking them out of the box. Everything about the build quality, we're saying quality, stitching looked great. Sometimes with, with shoes, you can see sort of excess glue popping out here and there. Things aren't quite perfectly aligned, but these are pretty much faultless coming out the box. As you'd hope for a shoe of this price. I've been out for a little while, I think since around about March, so you can expect some wiggle room on that price soon. But if you're spending that kind of money I'm imagining you're going to get well over 500 miles in these. 500 usually is sort of typical sort of mileage, and then I will kick in another pair. But the build quality on these, as long as the the foam and the guidance system holds up, I think well over 500, 750, 800 miles sort of range would be quite nice. And you've got a shoe that can pretty much do it all. So you're looking at, for most people, a year's worth of running there, if this is the only shoe that you have. So there you are. I'm pleasantly surprised by these. I'm going to keep these on my feet for, definitely for my recovery runs. I might even take them on a long run or two. I'll get them up to 100, 200 miles and give you my full review thoughts. But that's my first impressions. First time I've worn support shoes in a few years. 
and really pleasantly surprised. Stable, fairly lightweight, comfortable, not restrictive, and you feel like you can just do it all. You can plod, or you can take off and do a bit of speed work. So, first impressions, well done Puma, good effort. Right, that wraps it up. Hope you've enjoyed the review. If you had, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button and leave a comment. Let me know if you've tried these shoes before. All your thoughts generally on support shoes. Be interested to know if you're a neutral runner like me, but also wear support shoes every now and then. Or if you always wear support shoes, let me know what the market's like out there. Are there other shoes like this that can do it all? But yeah, thanks for watching. And until the next one, be the best you.